I can go live directly and not do an intro because this isn't a consultation. I finally caught up with enough work I can do an original. And this is one that's been mulling around in my head. I'm even mulling around, just crystallized thought, just haven't published it. <clears throat> uh, but that is one of uh, equilibrium returning to the sexual marketplace. Now, a lot of you, you tune in here because you were told one thing. You tune into Red Pill in general, master or whatever you want to call it. Because you were told a certain thing, this certain thing, this certain philosophy, the way things ought to be, was also corroborated by your entire genetic history. Society, culture, everything has operated this certain way. <clears throat> and then, as I've said before, through technological advancements, free markets, democracy, uh, but more, more technological investments than anything else, which then allowed for things like a welfare state democracy. Uh, this has changed the way things have been. And, and very recently, and just within literally everyone who's alive right now, their lifetime. And that change is one where women were reliant upon men, for better or worse, I understand. But they were reliant upon men for survival. And now, because... Advances in technology have largely eliminated the need for hard physical labor. <clears throat> and with democracy and free markets, we have so much wealth that anyone could survive doing a white collar job. Women don't need men anymore. And with the welfare state, in case you, I don't know, major in dumb crap, you still don't need guys anymore. And this has fundamentally changed something that's been there and has been the underpinning uh, incentive and reason the human race procreates. The, the whole reason human existence exists because girls needed guys to survive and guys wanted sex. That's it. That was the contract. That was the social exchange. And that has been upended. Um, maybe not so much after the agricultural revolution, but the, and even not even the industrial revolution, but technological revolution and certainly a, a cultural or social revolution further cemented by feminist ideology. I'm not even criticizing. I'm just saying they, they said, yeah, let's go. And it took a while, but three generations now, it goes like, we don't need you. And I, I am sitting here as an empiricist, as a, um, <clears throat> as an economist, like a, a scientist. And it even took me a long time to undo my genetic programming, the, the male sex drive wool in my eyes to stop and say, wait a second. It isn't, ooh, those drat, those feminists and, and those cursed kids. I'll get you again, Scooby-Doo. It wasn't the feminists. I'm starting to say, wait a minute. Empirically, women just don't like guys that much. And they never did. They never did. And when you, when you realize that, you're like, wait, they're, they're not lying. They're, they're telling us, we don't need you. Well, how many times have you heard that? Women could do anything a man could do. Well, because of the technology we invented, but we get your point. We get your drift. And uh, the the only then there's been masks and they oh be a traditional nice guy blah blah blah. So you've been lied in that way. But in in one regard, there is some truth there. They don't need you. They tell you. And more recently, I've been trying to get you guys to open your eyes. And, and see that, so you make uh, certain decisions. Now, <clears throat> whether that is reality or not, which I say it is, I, I think women just never like men that much to begin with. You could see it now in their behaviors, divorce, not getting married, pursuing career, college, all that. Um, that doesn't change the fact that this has been probably the largest single upheaval in intersexual dynamics, the relationship between men and women, and it's having a consequence on the birth rate, obviously. We, we're not going to go extinct, but the human population is definitely going to plummet. <clears throat> um, that that uh, epiphany, that realization, that observation, women just don't like guys that much, uh, which you guys are still like, does not undo literally all of human evolution and biological hardwiring. And what that does, especially when we are not upfront with men about, that's why I will say we have been lying to men. We're like, still be traditional, work hard, just be yourself. Uh, that's where we're lying to men to spare their feelings. Some men, you gotta give feminist credit. They tell you, we don't need you. 
I wish they would say, we also don't want you that much. And if we do want you, you better be this super alpha boobity boobity bobbity boo. But uh, women just like the courage to be forthright, empirical, and honest with guys. <clears throat> but aside from the individual women, let us also talk culturally speaking, society-wide. We continue to lie to guys about the rules of the game. And this results in a massive malinvestment of men's time pursuing essentially family and, and marriage and women and ultimately kids at the end of that. And you waste your entire life. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. The internet is changing that men are kind of waking up a little bit. But being lied to about something that's very important to you biologically, not even a, a choice or an option, and where you invest all your time, effort, labor, and resources, or not all, but a plurality or the majority of it towards that, and you don't get it because you're given the wrong information, and there has been this fundamental change in society, that pisses off men. At minimum, at minimum, it confuses them. They're like, what the heck is going on? Then you throw in, particularly in Western culture, <clears throat> uh, two things. One, divorce, which is not fun. It's predominantly started by women and uh, the payment and the financial and legal risks that are associated with that. And, but ultimately, the betrayal, like this is the founding thing of society and humanity would genetically program uh, uh, and integrated with, and, and this is what I want. And then that's just, oh, I'm not happy or whatever. <laughs> Forget the kids too. So that that was a, a just just an absolute bomb, a literal atomic bomb dropped on uh, intersexual dynamics, male female relations. And I don't know how many more generations y'all going to keep getting married. Like I, the boomers were enough for me to say, no, 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 no. Sing it with me, guys. No, 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 no. But you guys keep doing it, keep getting married, although that's going down now. <clears throat> but then also, kind of a holdover, and also by a, a consequence of Western civilization and democracy, uh, the, the pendulum has swung way too far where women were already kind of like, oh, okay, the weaker sex, we got to take care of them, defend it, da, 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 to no, we don't need men anymore. They still had the whole day. It was the cafeteria Christian thing. Well, I like this. I'll still, and how many times have you guys heard that? Where, well, I'm a modern woman and I want to do all these things, but I still like being traditional when it comes to what? The guy's got to pay and take all the risks? <laughs> and the classic want to have the cake and eat it too. So even though there's been this fundamental foundational change in male female dynamics and relations at least it pertains into the first world where we can afford such things women truly don't need men <clears throat> they want to hold on to all the benefits and goodies and fringe benefits that came with traditionalism you have now a, a total increase in risk of divorce where you know beforehand that wasn't even an option it was very exceptional right now it's very common so okay we already got to be careful with that but the hold another holdover is women are just more valuable than men in society it's true because eggs are what eggs are rare. Sperm is cheap. Eggs are not common. Sperm is all over the place. And in part because of traditionalism, in part because that's how society was, in part because of genetics, women and children first. We got to save the women, 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 women. So part of that is genetic. Part of it is sociological. But more recently, it's obviously political where the Democrat or your left or leaning uh politics, parties, and across all Western nations have come in a divide and conquer strategy where it's victimhood politics. And the trait as it pertains to this particular discussion we're having here is gender or sex, where the patriarchy has oppressed women. And heck, that's been going on since probably the Susan B. Anthony days. Where it's like, all right, I get it. You don't have the right to vote. I get it. <clears throat> I get it. You have some people, some states don't have the right to property. Okay. And they just kept going with that, which has the incentives, I would say, were long abandoned, had nothing to do with male-female dynamics. That's just human nature. What free crap? I could just say, woe is me. I have this trait I was born with, and it's the people that weren't born with that trait are oppressing me. And, you know, this goes back how long? 60s, 70s, where there was a, a vicious angle to it? Like, you're burning your bra. Why are you burning your bra? Tell me you're a boomer without telling me you're a boomer, and a dumb one at that. 
<clears throat> when I went to school in the nineties, you know, uh, you know, five and one women were, uh, forcible, not bedroom fun timed, you know, it, like ludicrous statistics, men are oppressing you, the patriarchy and all that. And even, and, and what ended up happening is not only has the original contract been more or less ruined and we still tell men to honor and operate by the original contract. Oh, and then I got something I'm going to keep. I'm going to that out. And you still have all the obligations and responsibilities on the old contract, but now you're entirely responsible for whatever, whatever failure is on the part of women, the, uh, the uh, wage gap, they're not happy. I, I don't know whatever else you're pressed. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's a new thing every day to the point this has now gone so far the other direction uh, that women are now, uh, uh, well, how can I put it? Men are a second class citizen <clears throat> and women are, are special privileged. And they are. They are. You get preferential hiring treatment. Society just constantly sings your praises. Men are kind of almost handicapped against this because you're just like, Hoo-ha! Touch P now. Your sex drive. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Not to mention you'll get fired or never employed or whatever. If you say, hey, maybe we're spoiling them rotten like children. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we ought to have equal, you know, maybe you girls should major in STEM and it's because you choose dumb degrees and that's why you make less money. Maybe you should work as much. But because of a whole host of stars aligning, planets aligning, Biology, men's sex drive, politics, uh, just the, the current political zeitgeist or environment. Uh, for the past two, three generations, whatever you want to call it, society has really uh, gone pro-female, which is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. But when it comes at the expense of men, which it has been, where now men are, we're somehow actively keeping you girls from majoring in computer science. We're all actively prohibiting you from becoming accountants. We're all there, you know, was it mansplaining and, and spreading our legs on the subway? I mean, all these increasingly petty and, and, and sad things. And then dare you ever introduce male reality, male sexual reality, which is, yeah, ladies, we want thin girls with big boobs and long hair. That Oh, that's bad. That's objectification. Yes. Yes, it is. It's not an option. We don't control it. <clears throat> but again, I, I think one thing that enables is the men's sex drive is so high. Like, oh, we're, we're sorry. Whatever. What, what do we got? What's the correct answer? What? Cut it off. Okay, fine. Will you touch it now? It's, it's <laughs> you never like, will you shut up with your nagging and your whining? You, I mean, obviously I, I have expertise in, in, in the background of education. I'm like, you're majoring in dumb crap. Can we just, can we just address that? Can we address that? But it, it goes into increasingly pettier and pettier things, you know, and I, I, I can't, none, none are coming up, you know, but what, whatever the latest complaint and whatever aggrieved, whatever grievance they have, you know, some guy, you know, women suffer most in war because their husbands die. Excuse me. Hold on, no. And if you have been born into the past three generations, I would even maybe throw the boomers in there because you dumb guys are like, oh, the left do is part. I don't know why she burned the bra, but yeah, baby. Come on, baby. Light my fire. I like the socialism too. <laughs> what do you mean, divorce? So uh, as technology has undermined and completely changed, and I would say politically and socially, we've moved to give women a, a genuinely privileged status, almost to a point of being spoiled where, you know, anything they do is our fault, which, which is just not true. <clears throat> uh, men are kind of had enough. And of the four generations, boomers, X. Millennials, Zoomers, Alpha and in there. Let's let them be kids for a little bit. <clears throat> the Boomers didn't know any better, and the Xs kind of didn't know any better because we're kind of getting old too. But along with the Industrial Revolution, uh, allowing for women's rights, again, you're not going to get me to argue with treating women as genuine equals. Absolutely. They, you, by all means. Oh, hang on. I knew this was going to happen. 
I knew this was going to happen. <clears throat> Boom. Done. Got him. Just getting one of those prawn advertisers out. Um, Where was I? Oh. It was the advent of the internet that allowed us to start comparing notes and, and conduct essentially the largest meta study on male-female dynamics. And going all the way back to the 2000s, you know, Rolo, I remember he so suave days back when Theodore Roosevelt was president. You know, back in those times. <clears throat> but even though it was just a message board or blogs or text, it was the first time you were no longer limited or relegated to conventional wisdom that was held by and controlled by, not in a monopolistic way, it's just those who are your, your, your parents, people within your immediate vicinity, family, friends, community. And I remember, I, I remember, so remember, I, you could talk to any Gen X or a Boomer about this, but it's probably more Gen X because Boomers girls still kind of like guys, I think, at least based on the pictures I saw. <clears throat> Women were smiling in the 60s. I don't know. Maybe they were having, I don't know. They weren't, a, I don't remember patriarchy being thrown around all that much. <clears throat> but you would say you would say there's something wrong with the girls in my school. There's something wrong here. I can't wait to go to a different school. Then you go to a different school or college. Like it's the same thing here. Man, I have bad luck. It can't because you had at least another thing with human genetics. You know when you're being screwed over, or at least you should. It's like this doesn't make sense. Why is this so hard? And your parents are completely aware. Well, I guess BSL, foul heart, money, follow. Boomer, 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 boomer. I don't know why I don't have any money. I'm getting divorced. I just gave it to your second stepmother, son. You're okay not getting an inheritance because this, this woman I married with other man's kids took all the money. But you understand, right? Those were the people. Well, I don't know. well, now you got the internet. And this would obviously apply to the millennials and the Zoomers and any of the younger Xers that got it out there. <clears throat> and we're all putting our notes together. Or recon all we're doing is reconstituting old wisdom that, that was lost maybe three, four generations ago. And more modernized into today's post uh traditional contract environment. I always say we're a post-marriage society. It also is, it's a post-traditional contract. The traditional contra contract, girl give the guy sex and kids, guy give the girl and kids money protection and all that. That is no longer there. But no one was honest about it in the analog days. And now every generation, obviously henceforth, is not born in the analog days. There's no analog days. People are getting the information quick. And you may disagree. I know feminists are going to disagree generally with the tone of this or my channel. Or it, <clears throat> but you cannot deny that that information is out there now. This meta study has now coalesced into not only rediscovered bits of lost wisdom, but rules, laws, uh, tenets, processes, praxeology, to, uh, hat tip to Rolo. <clears throat> uh, for younger people and more modernly adjusted for this post-traditional contract world. Which I would like to point out to the feminine. I'm being deadly serious about this. Assuming my, my premise is correct that you just don't like guys that much. You don't want to be bothered. Men are asking you girls out less, right? They're not asking you out that much. They're not harassing you as much, correct? I'm sure they're always going to harass you. I know it's the male sex job. I'm not going to go into that. But, you know, based on the research I've seen, girls are complaining because men aren't asking them out enough. Well, but at the same time, you're also not being bothered, right? Kind of what you wanted. <clears throat> and so what we're at right now is this not even a current dynamic, but the Internet's been around for a while. These principles and what I'd say have been coalesced for past 10 years. <clears throat> Maybe. It is required for young men to come out from underneath their their parental familial, <laughs> assuming their parents are wrong. Well, well, your dad's not around anyway, right? Am I right? Even if he's there, he's a weakling, right? He's a spineless sack, right? All right, so 
your family, whatever current condition that's in, nuclear stable, masculine or not, your your college education, the K through college, right? All your education, that's an environment. So maybe it takes you until you get out of that. But every guy does go through this kind of red pill rage. And I would say, I, I'd argue, as, as Thinking Ape has argued, there's not going to be this epidemic of red pill rage anymore because a 13-year-old sex drive is going to drive him to start searching things. Why can't I find the girls? Well, your dad ain't around. Your mom is probably not around either. You know, got to get her master's degree. <clears throat> you can't find the girls. Now you just Google it. You just search it. Bam. Now you're already in the red pill community. And now you're starting to have, you know, there's books and classes and a formalized study that we take from this massive medicine. Now digestible. And you guys may hate that. You may, oh, my God, they might run into an Andrew Tate. Oh, my God, that's horrible. That's bad. For better or worse, you cannot stop that information. It is out there. <clears throat> and so now there's, there's not as much red pill rage, but there's kind of like this. Oh, is that what it is? And whether or not you, you had red pill rage, you were lied to or not. What young boys are starting to find out is like, wait a minute. I'm at the fault for everything. I just got here. I'm a Zoomer. I'm 14 years old. I've done nothing but agree with my mom and then the girls in my school. What it, You get to college, it's the same thing. <clears throat> and whereas back in the analog days, the left largely had a monopoly on information. You don't anymore. Now, you may disagree with it or whatnot, but there's no longer a monopoly on that information. Alternative ideas can get out there. And whether girls like it or not, and this is where I'm very fascinated I'm almost humored by the mainstream media's approach, like, oh, whatever, red pill, MGTOW, incels, oh, a bunch of misogynists. And it's like, no, you're misdiagnosing this. It The, the men are kind of leaving. They're not asking girls out as much. They're deathly afraid. Uh, you also have to admit, ladies, that you've sent men pretty clear signals you don't want to be harassed or bothered. Um, and well, another thing, if you can't hear you, 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 you want to be trying to be open-minded. Let me just, why aren't boys asking out girls? Well, they're afraid and they're cowards and the dads raised them and they're raised by a bunch of women in the school and they don't want to harass girls. They don't want to be creepy. Da, da, da. But you girls are not what men are biologically programmed to want to have. I tweeted out a picture of this girl who just had tattoos all over her face and Coke bottle glasses and a look like a Hitler nose piercing. And it's just like, look, I, and then boys, you're in no better shape. Well, let's be intellectually honest, but female youth and beauty is what drives men. And that's another reason boys aren't asking girls out. And then the same people on CNN or whatever, like who complain, oh my God, uh, incels, MGTOW, whatever. <clears throat> Why isn't anyone having kids? <laughs> oh my God. It's a Scooby-Doo mystery. I mean, Larry Summers, in between a, According to my economic models, I can't find out why people aren't getting married. I just re I respond. He'll never respond. Hey, I said, fat girls with tattoos. There, I solved your problem. <laughs> Next question. And you may not like it, but you're not going to undo what men want. And you scream at the sun, call us horrible names and whatever. You're not going to change the fact we'd rather have Pamela Anderson from 1996 than any modern day female uh, model on Amber Crombie and Fitch right now. It's just, I, and that's fine. You, and here's, here's why <clears throat> I don't want you girls to, you know, I'm an individualist. I'm a libertarian. You don't want to have anything to do with guys. You don't like guys that much. You don't want to put in the effort to attract a man. That is absolutely your choice. You should not live your life hoping, to, ooh, I'll get a guy. Fine, go, just all I ask. All I ask is you be honest about it, which again, some feminists have been. You guys just don't listen. Some girls are, but then maybe I'll get a guy. It's like, just just tell them you're not interested. Just <clears throat> Anyway, getting back, not to go too far into the weeds here. What has resulted in young men, middle aged men and old men, now that we have the internet, you don't have, again, don't have to agree with it, but it is simply not fair how we give women preferential treatment in this economy, this culture, this society. Uh, we blame men for their mistakes. Okay. You girls don't work as much as it pertains to the wage gap. You major in dumb stuff. 
I'm telling you that because I actually care about you. I want to help you close the wage gap. Right? <clears throat> um, we also sociologically, psychologically, mentally speaking, don't like being falsely accused of all the problems that befuddle and beset women. Some of which maybe are caused by, but not not everything. We don't like the lack of meritocracy and fairness in employment. Uh, colleges and universities are just toxic and anti-male. That's just that's psychopathic leftism. <clears throat> um, and you kind of, whether you like it or not, what do men get up? What do men go to war for? What do we get up for? Women. And you've removed that from the formula either by telling most men that not not the strong men. I I know there's always the tense. Uh, but telling them you don't need them, telling them they're the cause of the problem, and never even asking what men. I mean, did. I'm not asking you to agree, never asking you to agree. I'm just asking you to understand. Could you understand why some men might be upset with that Gillette commercial? Do you know how many men just did everything you possibly said and 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 wanted? And now you're still, I, again, you're still blaming them about the Patriot. I, I always, what is Gen Alpha boys who are just going to be the most agreeable pansified putzes you've ever met in your life? Are you going to still blame them? For unconscious or institutional patriarchy. <clears throat> and you took away the reason to live, which is a cute girl with an ass that backs up and with grand bodacious tatas and long hair and a feminine demeanor. You may find it disgusting, doesn't matter. That's what gets men up in the morning. So you've gutted the reason for living. They've seen their dads get divorced, their grandfathers get divorced, their buddies get divorced. And now they ha it's not a Scooby-Doo mystery to them anymore. They got the internet. They go there and they find out. And so now what's happening is men are pulling back and they're going gold. Now, agreed, the advent of the internet has also made it so that women have an abundance of choice. And they, too, have removed themselves from the average Joe market. We're only operating at the margins now. Girls really only are interested in what seems to be about the top 10%. That's being generous. Um, but men also are making a, a calculation. They're doing the, the calculus on this too, saying, man, <clears throat> they really don't want us. And if they do want us, I got to be that guy over there. And most guys just don't have the work ethic to do that. They also don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the incentive. And I would also say genetically and culturally, sociologically, our environment that we've raised up these boys in chemically, mentally, sociologically, you've destroyed their testosterone. Testosterone is very low and they're not they're not as aggressive or masculine. And so they're not going to be as go getting as you would like them to be. Now, <clears throat> usually when we talk about equilibrium. People think of the pendulum swinging back. In kind of a retributive justice sort of way. And whereas you'd like to see that in the theater. And I, I'm not talking about that. I don't think we're going to see an equilibrium. I don't want to talk about equilibrium in that way. Because oftentimes equilibrium is not as linear. Too much A, time for B. Now we got more too much B. But equilibrium, balance, yin and yang, black and white kind of thing. Sometimes it manifests itself in a different way. And what I'd like for everyone, particularly the boys, but for everyone to realize, because it's going to have consequences for society and the globe, <clears throat> is to realize there is an equilibrium. The pendulum is swinging back, but not in the way many of you would like in a, in a justice, revenge, a vengeance type of way. Or something as clearly as, yeah, we're going to go back to the old contract and women going to be women, men going to be men. <clears throat> Oftentimes, because this happens all the time in economics, it happens where you don't expect it. And it, and a lot of times when you're talking about it, that means it's already happening. And that's why I say equilibrium has returned. Now, it's, it's gaining momentum. The pendulum has swung back. It's swung back a different way. It's going to have different costs and, and benefits for all the different parties involved. But it's, it is, it was what, at its apex? I think it was at its apex about 10 years ago. And it hit uh, uh, <clears throat> a velocity of zero, and now it's coming back the other way. And it's gaining momentum. And the way it's gaining momentum, and if, well, we'll get to that later. The way it's gaining momentum is you can look at it in terms of male labor force participation of young men, 18 to 24, 18 to 54. You can look at it. Overall, men's labor force participation rate has been going down, but that's because we're lazy. 
And um, <clears throat> technology has allowed it. But particularly among young men, that labor force participation is going down. And other, other corroborating bits of evidence that would uh, parallel this, everyone thinks it's a crisis. Men are not going to college like men are dropping out of college. I think that's one of the best financial moves you young men can do. There is no reason for you to go to college. I mean, we just had to bail out how many people with the student loan bailout. So it shows you college is a dumb, dumb idea for most people. I was going to major in engineering or STEM. But society is like, air maker, sound the bells. Men aren't wasting their years in youth and money in college. Oh, nosy. They're, they're doing something stupid like going to the trades, but not even doing that. Neat, the neat rate, the U6 unemployment rate, the underemployment rate. And then, ladies, I'll admit this to you. The quality and caliber of men physically is not looking good. Yeah, they're overweight. And he, overweight is a hard, it's kind of an odd moving target because there's more than one variables. <clears throat> you, the older you get, the fatter you get because you choose to. I don't believe in it. Oh, it's just my metabolism. I guess you run another mile. <laughs> so everyone's lazy, but okay, you get old, you tend to get overweight when you get older. <clears throat> um, but also there's not as much exercise. Men are not lifting weights, they're not going to the gym. Uh, we've removed women from their lives, essentially, right? Most men, right? Because you grow up, they did the studies, you know, like what? Uh women find 80% of men not attractive, five or below. They rate them five or below. All right, so you've taken that off the table, you've told them. Why? And if they are going to pursue the win, they have to become an exceptionally handsome man. A lot of guys are going to say, look, humans are already pretty darn lazy. That's our default setting. Now you're like, you give them a video games, you give them Doritos, you give them a Mountain Dew, you give them Adderall and pot, <clears throat> legalized pot. That's going to help out girls. That's how they'll bring the men up to the forefront. You'll find your real man then. You give women preferential hiring treatment. You've sung nothing but their praises and condemned men for being bad ever since they were in kindergarten. Men are shutting down. They're going galt, if you want to use a libertarian economic reference. <clears throat> They're not participating in society. And for some, you may be indifferent about that. Fine, time for women to take over. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, fine. More money for women in college is time for women to lead or whatever. That's fine. But here's where the equilibrium is. And for those of you searching for comeuppance or retributive justice or poetic justice or some kind of revenge, here's where it is. It, it's not an opinion. I'm terribly sorry. You can look it up on the NIPA accounts. <clears throat> look it up by choice of major. Ladies, you don't produce the majority of important things in this economy. No doubt there are some women who do. You all know Jesse Price, who works on gas, gas rigs. There are uh, female doctors, female surgeons, female accountants, female iron workers, female electricians, female plumbers, female uh, farmers. There are women out there, but as a group, you all major in look at yourself studies, sociology, journalism, sociology, women's studies. And whether you like it or not, the world doesn't need those things. We really don't. Those are luxuries. Those are those are hobby type of professions where you need a whole ton of government money and a really boom and a kind of like everything else has to be taken care of to they have that uh, kind of bought and paid for. And you can run that for a while. You can have these totally frivolous, pointless jobs if, you, if you'd like, professions. <clears throat> but one of these days, the bridges are going to start going out. And soon, your toilet isn't going to work. And you're going to need electricity. And basically, everything that's important in this economy is drastically disproportionately done by men. I think Joker even pulled up some of the data one time when he looked at the NIPA accounts. It's like 99% of linemen are men, plumbers, tradesmen, and all that. And this is not a big plug for the trades. It is a plug for the trades. Young men, or young ladies, are you looking, ladies, are you looking to close the wage gap? Become an electrician. 
<clears throat> go become a truck driver. You can do it. I never said you couldn't. It's just like when you look at choice, you just all want to play patty cake and save the world with other people's money. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're not even supporting yourself. You need dad and the government to bail you out, right? Am I right? Yeah. But for those of you that are like, you know, what this the you're ruining or lamenting or wishing that the traditional contract was still in force or hoping for a return to those days, those days are not coming back because women just don't want you. Generally speaking, I want some of you, but not not most of you. And because of democracy and technology, that's not good and the welfare state and all that. <clears throat> But what no one forecasted, I even did a video on this, the thing that feminism overlooked, is, well, if you take girls out of men's lives, what are men going to do? As I've said before, men are the economic engines that all economies run on. And female youth and beauty is the fuel that fuels them. If you remove women from men's life, they're doing exactly what they're doing now. They're shutting down. They're going into stasis or ketosis or something like that. They're mailing it in. They're not going to college. They're not working overtime. They're subscribing to Josh Fluke, although Fluke focuses on how just unjust most employers are. <clears throat> they're not, if, if they do get any kind of job, they're not going to be, hey, I'm going to work hard to be the corporate man. They're like, no, nah, I'll jump around a little bit. Jump around. Jump around. That was a thing for my day. They're not, now the boys still buy the cars, there's still those boys out there, but minimalism. Is, is going up men living at home that's a complaint you girls have right you like to have a guy who who doesn't live at home oh whenever when your parents give you money to help you out with a car or rent that's not living at home but you don't want a guy actually living at home right ah, that's bad <clears throat> well why why would they go rent a place for two thousand a month if they're not going to have kids if there is a one in five chance they're going to get divorced, not to mention their entire youth, they've heard just how much they're not needed and you don't want them by action and word. You know, maybe a guy got the balls to ask you out and you shot him down or whatever. And, and you have the right to not to put, if they're like, wait, I'm no mathematician here, but I know some basic math. If I live at home and I pay my parents $400 a month for it, and then I go get my degree or <clears throat> contract or, or, or truck, uh, and I save all this money, I can work 20 hours a week. I could be a plumber. I don't even have to show up. I don't have to do 40 hours a week. I could be a bartender. And there's no real need for me to work 40 hours a week or become an excellent achieved man. I just need to get by. And my parents will die. And I'll get the house, for, and that's fine because there were never going to be any kids or family anyway. <clears throat> oh, certainly some people are still going to have kids, right? But but an increasing percentage of men are doing the cost benefit analysis as saying, "Whoa, I'm not, I'm not putting in 110 percent until I know for a fact that there's going to be some kind of rate of return." And so far, even though I was very against when I was younger, I was very against adults. 18 plus living at home. I'm like, get your ass out there and be a man, be a woman, get out in the real world. <clears throat> now with all the money we printed off over the past three presidents uh, and we just want free everything and Obamacare and student loan bailouts and help us with student aid and all that, that money, when you, when you print it off, you manifest it, it, it tends to go back into the economy and drive prices up like rent and housing. <clears throat> I look at that and I'm like, we got to redo this here. Because what men normally got up, what got them up, what fired up those economic engines in the morning until they were dead <clears throat> was you. We're children if you were to have children. And now that has been removed from the table. They ain't no fuel. They're shutting down. They're getting by on impulse power. And they're, they're doing the least amount possible. Of which you girls are further reinforcing with socialism. Again, not all girls vote Democrat. I understand that. But, right, you want UBI? You think the men are low quality and caliber now. You just wait till you give them UBI. You just wait. If you're if you're having try, I can't find a man. Well, <laughs> you put life on easy mode. You're going to have some pretty weak men. 
<clears throat> but the real comeuppance is without this army of men banging out 50, 60, 70 hours a week to support a family. In part because, well, everything's bought and paid for and also in part because there's divorce. Like this, it just marriage is no longer tenable. They're not interested. They're not. They're, oh, not to mention there's a ton of prawn. I mean, that's a substitute. Right? That army has been demoralized and not even equipped to go and have the work ethic to produce the stuff we all need. And as I said before, if you forecast it, it's almost already happening. It is. You're not able to find people to work on your car, right? Oil change, basic stuff. You just be able to go to Jiffy Lube. There'd be a monkey lube wrench guy wrenching a, <clears throat> a wrench monkey, lube monkey, whatever. All right, maybe he wasn't, he wasn't an investment banker, but he was working hard because he was trying to get the girls. They can't, they can't, no one could, you can't even find bartenders. And we could all do it without bartenders. No offense to bar. Well, maybe we couldn't do it without, I <laughs> think about it. <laughs> maybe we really need those. But, the stuff that is so ho hum and boring to you, girls. Things like tradesmen, road crews, uh, electrical engineers, electricians, <clears throat> uh, computer programmers, accountants, all the things that really make the world go around. That's really important. Not I'm an elementary school teacher for special ed. No, you are a babysitter because the parents didn't want to raise that kid. That's how it is. We're going to all suffer a much lower standard of living. Now, is that what men wanted? No, I think most men still want the girl, sir. But not if it means you got to hit the gym, guys, right? And give up your Doritos and Cheetos, right? Little slam on guys there. Really not sure honesty. <clears throat> Um, what's going with that? Oh, we're we're just gonna suffer. We're gonna suffer a, a lot lower standard of living. And I know you guys kind of wanted the girls. That's where I was going. You wanted the girls. You wanted to have the family. You want to have the fun and all that. I don't think we're ever going back to that because I I really wish and, you know girls. You could prove me wrong any time, but I think I got a pretty locked case. Girls just don't like you that much. And technology has gotten to the point that we can all su support ourselves without needing one another. <clears throat> if the human race is going to continue, it is not going to be on the traditional contract. There'll be a new dynamic, a new one where I hate to sound so uh, brave, new worldy or post marriage society or science fiction. It'll be uh, sperm banks or it'll be, um, you know, there'll be. Uh, the top 10% of guys will just impregnate all the other women. Uh, it's not that hard. You know, you don't need that many men to, to keep the, the the population is definitely going to take men and women are both removing themselves from the marriage market. I mean, it's, it's absolutely, it's ludicrous to even get married. <clears throat> yeah, men would have liked that, but we're not going back there. So the new equilibrium. The new world, the new contract, the new dynamic, the new playing field that we're at now is one where women would, I presume, if you want to have children, you would go and have them through not nuclear family means, sperm bank, donor, whatever. All right. And just so you know, guys, based on polling and actions, women don't want kids that much either. Okay, so I think we're both kind of like, eh, not in this environment. Okay, but if anything going forward, women are going to, if they want to have kids, they will do it not in the traditional way going forward. <clears throat> women generally will vote for the left because free stuff, right? And that puts everyone, themselves included, in a higher tax bracket. You guys who unfortunately are disproportionate. I'd, I'd say 85% of the, like, the stuff we need that's really important, 85% of the economic engine will be slowed down at minimum, if not shut down. Right? And we're going to have lower GDP, lower standards of living, severely lower standards of living. You got to wait three months to get an oil change? You know, your, your I don't know, uh, plumbing doesn't work. Computers don't work. Nothing works because no one's working. Um, <clears throat> that's that that is that will be kind of the new economy. And the men are going to be saying, wait, I got to pay how much in taxes? 
to support a welfare state, to support, you know, Chad and Tyrone and T Rash's kids that they had, you're just going to keep demoralizing them and demoralizing them, and you're going to have this mail in effort. And the economic production that is necessary or required to maintain our standards of living will be here. I'm wondering if it's even going to be enough to maintain the infrastructure, keep the lights on. I didn't buy solar panels because I cared about the environment. I bought solar panels because I don't think you're generating enough electricians, electrical engineers, and alignment. We got a ton of diversity and inclusion graduates who are going to lecture me about my white male privilege. I don't care. You can do that. I'll have electricity. <clears throat> and so there are bad times coming, which were, again, like I said, we're already here. There is a labor shortage. There's definitely a skilled labor shortage. Men are men are just getting ugly. We're not staying in shape. No one, no one's getting pretty. No one's no one's being presentable in public. Chad is like just nope, only corporate clients. You can't find tax accountants. The IRS can't find enough accountants to run itself. And this is the, the revenue collecting arm of the Democrat Party. Even they can't find it. I like the, the irony. I love how the Democrats, free everything, don't work, follow your heart, money will follow. Well, that means no one's going to major in accounting because who's passionate about accounting? Shut up, you capitalist pig. And then when it comes time for the IRS to fund the Democrat Party, oh, well, we can't find any accountants. You, you told them to major in dumb crap. Uh, does not compute. Does not compute. <laughs> the sad truth is, you need men to run society. I don't mean manage it necessarily, but you're going to need it to have a running functional society because like it or not, we're the ones that produce everything that's important. And I've talked about this before. So it is really, it, and it's a choice for women. Ladies, it is up to you. And this is go back to the thing that feminists overlook. Ladies, now is your chance. You can absolutely run society. And it's going to be a choice for you. You can either step up where men are dropping out and you'll own it. You'll own all of society. You'll make all the money. You'll, you can just tell men what to do. <clears throat> and you really won't need men. You can become the tradesmen. You can become the truck drivers. You can become the train engineers. You become the military. You can, uh, 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 whatever, the accountants and all that. You're going to need to step up when the men are dropping out if we wish to maintain our standards of living. But if you want to keep doing this, have your cake and eat it too, where you're going to go major in studies telling the other producers how to spend their money because you listen to some washed up professor who never worked a day in his or her life and you think it's fair or just, and that you're not producing a damn thing, we are all going to have lower standards of living to the point I believe we have brownouts and blackouts on the electrical grid in different parts of the country. Not me. I was smart. I'm going to make channels. And notice I haven't even talked about what you girls want in terms of romance because I'm just assuming you don't want most guys, right? But if you were, if you wanted love and handsome, strong men, well, you got to stop putting life on easy mode and you better give men like an incentive. But that would, now we're going back to the old contract, which is moot and academics. So I'll just stop talking about that. <clears throat> So we are almost guaranteed, which we are already here now. I don't know if you noticed the inflation cost of living going up and things are more expensive. I wonder how that happened. Men, are, they're just dying. They're shutting down. And now there's not as much food in the thing. There's not much toilet paper. There's not much electricity. We can't charge our cars. You can't charge this. And it's going to keep getting worse and worse. You'll treat it with printing off more money and then inflation will go up higher and higher. And I'm okay. And you know what? Most men are going to be okay if they're not consumers, if they're not materialists. If men are minimalists, which increasing numbers of them are living at home, right? They don't need two homes. They borrow mom and dad's car. They'll get by on very little. And let's admit it, it's easier to feed a man of one than a family of five. Right? And if everyone's okay with this lower standard of living, I mean, we're not going to collapse, but we'll be like, I don't know, Belize, Guatemala, solid second world, second level, second tier country. What is this? Why is it always going off? 
hell, bleep it. I got so much stuff going on in life. I mean, you know, there'll be cleanish water. But yeah, Range Rovers are going away. Gas, ten dollars a gallon. Guess we could all work remote. We could all be internet influencers. Huh? Look at that. <clears throat> but and if you're okay with that, that's fine. And men, if you're you're like, oh, drat those women breaking their contract, never liking us in the first place. Well, okay, but one, respect the decision. What are you gonna force them? I mean, you know, now you face the dictator's paradox. Oh, it would be great to be king. No, when you got to manage all these people. So it, it's like, no, it is what it is. This is the this is the new economy, the new world, the new society. Where is the post-marriage society where men will just get by on very little? Women, I'm, I'm sorry, girls, I just don't have faith in you. Prove me wrong. I'd love you to prove me wrong. You're not going to go become engineers. You're not going to become linemen. You're not going to, I don't know, metallurgists, not going to become welders. And God bless you gals who are. God bless you. You're honest. But if it comes to, whoa, learning something hard and sweating and roofing in July, or, well, I guess I'll take my $10,000 monthly government check and go buy three loaves of bread, you probably do that. And how we procreate, I think you girls are going to have to go to the sperm banks. You're going to have to find T. Rash or Tad or Chad or Tyrone or all those guys or come up with agreements. Men are going to be very reluctant because of child, uh, you know, child support laws. Well, that's a whole other argument, whole other debate, whole other issue. And men are men are largely going to become a parasitic class. In short, they're going to do just enough to get by. You've eliminated the top three levels of Maslow's hierarchy, hierarchy of needs, and you just gave them safety, food, clothing, and shelter. And they're going to substitute the remaining three with video games and prawn and other forms of, well, I mean, I mean, how many uh, Adderall, pot, <laughs> smoking pot, you know, well, did he have a reason to get up this morning? He didn't. Oh, Okay. Did you tell me he's sucking? He's part of the patriarchy? You did. Gee, I wonder why he's drinking. <laughs> it's almost like actions have consequences. I don't know. <clears throat> but that is what everyone is facing. And I will, I'll tell this if, you know, you boys are looking for retributive justice. We're better at getting by on less than women are. I think women are in for, I'll be perfectly honest, I think women are in for a miserable Next couple generations, which they're already here. Again, if you're forecasting, it's already here. How many girls just, you know, what's what's your antidepressant use, ladies? How much alcohol are you going to drink? Do you cry yourself to sleep? I don't know. That's what I hear. I don't care. It's not. I'm out of this game. I'm I'm on the sidelines eating my popcorn like Michael Jackson in the in Thriller. <clears throat> so I think women are absolutely going to suffer. Um They'll never admit it because they got to keep up the front. They, they can never they can never deviate from the sisterhood. Otherwise, you might be called names. Oh, nosies. <laughs> but if, if you're looking for a silver lining, if you can call this horrific environment, this horrific society we're about to live in, uh, you know, a silver lining, guys get by easier on less. You got your prawn. You got your video games. Your mom and your dad's house. You're not going to have any kids. You're not going to have any debt. You're not going to go to college. It's good. It actually is going to be a very easy life. <clears throat> we got a lot of guys who are like, yeah, I, I busted my ass off, major in IT. I'm a computer programmer. I live in Thailand. What do I do now? I, I have half I mean, literally, I've had, I have half a million. I make 200,000 a year. What do I do? I'm like, I, you just enjoy life now. That's what you do. And girls, you could you could do the same. I mean, nothing stop you from IT, computer programming, accounting, and living. I don't know where do girls like to go. Uh, Morocco. I don't know some someplace warm. I just picture you girls someplace warm and exotic. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, do whatever you want and have a. But until there is ever a return to the traditional contract, which I don't think is happening, because you girls just don't want it. This is the new. This is the new normal. Two sexes in their own respective corners, 
generally not liking each other. One, dying for the top 5 to 10% to come and give them the time of day. Some agreeing to get impregnated either directly or indirectly by if they really wanted to have kids. A complete drop in the birth rate. Marriage is going to be gone. Thank God that is a dumb institution. That is a dumb legal and financial move for everyone. <clears throat> And then there'll be, and then the argument and the battle of the sexes will continue. The girls will write their articles. Why can't men? Blah, blah, blah. And I, I'll, I'm going to salute our own boys. We don't do why can't women anymore. We're just like, here's how women be. Here's how women do. Here's how women is. And now X, Y, and Z, we're going to do that. And we're going to go do some production or progress or something else. But we don't pontiff. We don't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> to show you girls that who's more anchored in reality and therefore whose decisions are going to be more effective in this post-marriage society, you girls think you're going to convince guys to think big is beautiful. Good luck. I mean, you got 83 years of life expectancy on the planet. You want to piss it away on that. You want to go and piss into that hurricane and have fun. Guys are at, I mean, guys are saying, well, I'm going to jerk off the prawn and play my video games. That's more productive than trying. I'm going to convince girls to like fat guys who are skinny fat and live at home with their parents to like me. <clears throat> it's not going to happen. And so I think you'll see a further division of the sexes. And I think slowly but surely men will overcome their genetic hardwiring for a sex drive in women and they're not going to get as angry. They're kind of like, why don't women blah, 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 blah. now they'll get pissed about unfair treatment, you know, that women get in hiring and society's constant worship of them or the hypocrisy that women say they're oppressed in this world when it's like, what do we got to do? We got what the statue's got to be in platinum instead of regular old gold, a diamond encrusted. What more do you want? Um, men will get upset about that. Those kind of injustices, but otherwise men are just going to like, they're going to, they're going to, you know, shut down. They're going to become very insular. They're going to do what they want to do. They're going to go on the end. They're going to find, oh, they'll come to this level of stoicism. Maybe they'll go overseas and find traditional girls in, in poorer cultures, and that's fine. But generally speaking, I think they're going to kind of move on with their life. They'll accept their lot in life, and they'll make the best of it. I, I still see, like, I've never understood feminism <clears throat> in one regard where all you do is bitch about guys. And I'm like, why don't you, like, let's say you decide you don't like guys. Well, shouldn't that free you to go fish and hang out with the girls or do whatever you want? What do they do? They bitch and whine about guys. Like, the only reason I'm here is because I got a ton of clients that are trying to navigate this. But if if I did, if this went away, I wouldn't be like, drat those women not doing the thing I want them to do. <clears throat> I'd be like, oh, cool. Now I could go write my comic book. Now I could go find, I could go to my Croatian hut and participate in Borscht Fest. But we are here at an equilibrium now. Equilibrium is returning to the market, not in the way you would thought because that's under the lens of the traditional contract, which is obsolete and we're not returning to it. But the equilibrium is coming in the form of men giving up on society, going gulp, shutting down, going into a coma, and just getting by to support their own. They are not participating in society anymore. And the consequence of that is going to be lower standards of living, which are already suffering now with higher inflation and a lack of skilled people to do the jobs that are going to be required. And it's to become more pronounced and more painful as time goes on. And I would say for everyone involved, Prepare for that, because ladies, let's admit, are you gonna are you gonna go against your general unattraction to most men and like, oh, I better start wifing up and you know for average Joe Plumber? And are you boys gonna go and get your master's degree in computer science and hit the gym? And are you, how many times are you gonna ask a girl out? I mean, really, after you get shot down, I mean, someone's a little more responsible than the others. But you know, I I got a story, got a report from an agent in the field. I'm like, wow, man, I remember those days. <laughs> and so that's great, girls. I mean, you may vote. Well, we'll get our money from the government. We got the welfare state. Yeah, but there's no production in the economy anymore. And I don't know what you're going to buy with your either $150,000 corporate job check 
or your ten thousand dollar welfare check. Because I, I don't know if you all paid attention to economics. It doesn't matter how much money's in the economy; it's whether or not things are being produced. Money's just a tool to transact those things and the labor that goes into them. <clears throat> so, boys and girls, I strongly recommend you get some solar panels. Boys and girls. I strongly recommend you learn how to do some basic auto repairs, get yourself some tools, go down to Harbor Freight, get a good set of tools. I know there's not a good set of tools. I know the cheap tools. Don't email me. Girls, I I learn to do your taxes, uh, maintenance and repair, home maintenance and repair, men, get some good carpentry skills. And I strongly recommend this. Y'all start learning to become minimalists. Because the days of all I'm gonna get my seventy thousand dollar Range Rover. <clears throat> that's coming to an end pretty quick, right? I think men are a little bit easier on this, but guys, don't you don't need a brand new car. The girls are not interested, generally speaking, so don't bother. You don't, you know, maybe spend your money on some video games if that's fun, okay? But don't be going out to nightclubs. Don't be pissing away your money on fancy this or fancy, and certainly not fancy clothes. Ladies, I'd recommend the same thing. You don't need a fancy car. You don't need. I don't know, a downtown cool flat or whatever, a fancy condo. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd get some freeze-dried food if I were you, learn to get a fire a gun. I know post-apocalyptic, I'm just saying things that might actually have some value. <clears throat> Develop some hobbies that don't cost any money, hiking, and get used to being alone too. Oh, by the way, everyone's going to be alone too. You're all going to be alone. You're going to die alone. So get used to being alone. Pick up some philosophy. Read some uh, Schopenhauer. All right. Read some Stoicism. Get some hobbies and lock in and be prepared not to spend a lot. Because, okay, fine. You're going to have a lot of money, but there won't be much to buy or it'll be very expensive, even adjusted for inflation. <clears throat> so there you go. There's the equilibrium. I know a lot of you guys, are like, you know, you're looking for it because you were lied to. I understand you still got that red pill rage. Like, yeah, there's the equilibrium. You know, we'll be fine. We'll get by. You know, we would have liked something better. Eh, it ain't going to happen. It wasn't our time. Girls, you're in the same boat as us. And I will try to get men to respect your indifference towards them so they don't bother you anymore. Ray John, two Canadian bucks. This job needs 30 creds. Should I do it? <clears throat> 30 credits. Well, aren't you sitting for your CPA, Ray John? You might as well go for your master's. But you're up in Canada, right? They got a different way to qualify. Uh, Donna Hannaford, all right, my Australian, not yours. She's my Australian mistress agent in the field for two Australian dollars. And it's a super sticker. I don't know what it is. Bob, two bucks. That's why I put myself interest before society. Yep, put yourself, yes. We're going to, there's not, by the way, there won't be a community. There'll be communities based on tribalism. I mean, literally, it could be something as petty as like, well, I'm a Green Bay Packers fan. I mean, there's your tribe. <clears throat> um, oh, thing, hang on. Because we pretty much don't want anything to do with each other, I recommend everyone get the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. This was not a promotion or commercial for this book. It's an observation I had that the pendulum is swinging back. We are achieving equilibrium. The equilibrium is us having nothing to do with each other. And since we're going to have nothing to do with each other, I suggest before you guys take the Fred pill like my buddy Fred did, you please learn to find purpose and reason in living in life without the opposite sex. <clears throat> I mean, if you're sad, male or female, doesn't matter. Get the book. There's a man and, and, and woman's menu in there. There's all this stuff to do in life. Whether your your government check will afford anything is another matter. A lot of things in there, though, that don't cost a lot of money. Oh, 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 got to scroll down. <clears throat> Where do we go? Keep scrolling. Sean Bipley is my new favorite guy for $100. He didn't even have anything to say. Thanks, Sean. Uh, very generous of you. I mean, email me or something. I kind of feel, I mean, if you had a question, let me know, but $100. Man, we're almost getting a fresh and fit categories now, aren't we? I'll be on this show this Monday, this upcoming Monday. <clears throat> Wholesome DJ Aftershock, five bucks. You heard about one of the engineers at Twitter after being fired, complaining that they won't be able to afford their car payment on their Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you had to go to Silicon Valley where all the action is. Here's, I'm going to make a forecast. I think when the plumbing doesn't work and these girls, like their, their investment banker boyfriends who all they know how to do is embezzle money or their MBA dude bro lawyer types can't fix the toilet, you know, can't install a window, don't know how air conditioning works. I think the... Uh, tarnished veneer, the icky gross. Ooh, he's a carpenter. I think that's going to go away. All of a sudden, Mike Rowe or the Mike Rose of the world are going to start start to look like pretty handsome fellows. Not this decade. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But before I die, I think you're going to see that where girls are like, oh, yeah, he's a truck driver. He's a truck driver. Oh, wow. All I got is this Harvard MBA who still sucks on his mom's teat. Well, that's all Harvard MBAs, isn't it? No. <laughs> ah, you guys are so worthless. Oh, scrolling, scrolling. Journey trials in joy, five bucks. It's going to generations. It's going to generations to get something back to normal. It's going to take generations to get something back to normal. No, I, I think the advent of technology has literally liberated women from men. I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. I don't think women like men all that much. I think they really tolerated us. And they 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 sucked our peen so we would protect them. I honestly think they, I mean, why would they use their the vernacular and the vocabulary and the jargon? They, liberation, we don't need you. There, there's some veracity to that. <clears throat> It's not, it's not going to take, it's going to take an utter economic collapse is what it's going to take, which I don't forecast. Um, I don't think there's not going to be normal times, not again. Uh, but there would need to be hard times. Yeah. Cripplingly hard times purge out the hedonistic and lazy ways of this generation. I, as long as there is good enough technology. Now, the welfare state and the, the parasites within it could grow so large, they outconsume the productive capacity of the productive class. And then no matter what the technology, technology won't save you. You know, you'd have to have like AI where the robots just produce everything. And even then, there's a limit to the wealth that the robots can produce before the parasites outbreed the productive capacity of an army and an economy of robots. And then you're going to need someone to build the robots and reprogram the robots. And then, oh, hey, we've just been like that spaceship in Wally, sitting here drinking and eating food all the time. And then it won't be fat anymore. Um, <clears throat> but as long as there's white collar work and um, a welfare state and the electricity is on and food is plentiful, I think people I, I honestly think women would rather live in Section 8 housing on a government. The average woman would rather live in Section 8 housing with her children on various forms of government aid, perhaps even you know working a job than submitting herself to a guy. You know, it, it, that's not a slam. That's I'm just saying that's what I that's the impression I get rather than the, the thing about it, guys. Would you want to be with stuck with a girl you really don't like and don't want to have sex with? I think that's what women have been trying to tell us in not not so many in an incredibly roundabout way. <clears throat> they never really liked you that much. After a while, they resent having to kind of be your servant. And so now that they, yeah, you give a woman her freedom, like, yeah, you don't have to you don't have to sleep with that guy anymore. You don't have to do his laundry. Here's a government check. And yeah, it's not the greatest housing. It's a little dangerous, but I'm sure you prefer that than being stuck in a room with someone you don't like. Justin, bring 10 bucks. <clears throat> Appreciate your content, bunny. Thanks, Justin. I got nothing. Man, look at you. Holy cow. I need you in a bar fight. Oh, man, look at you. Thomas Crown, 10 bucks. My boss sent me a task this week, and she stated, it's not urgent, but we will need it as soon as possible. That statement makes me makes very little sense and seems contradictory. Is my boss an idiot? I don't know. I have to get to know your boss a little bit, but most bosses are idiots. They are. They just are. Say it again. People are promoted based on conformance, not performance. And so you get the dumbest, most conformant, most myopic, linear thinking people ever. <clears throat> what self employed 1099, Thomas, the 1099 superior race. You got to join it. Depressed Panda, five bucks. Can Cappy get to 100,000? Yeah, by the way, uh, 702 of you, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel now, you don't have to donate money. 
just subscribe to the channel. That's free. And we're so close to 100,000 at 94.8 thousand. Can you guys at least give me above 95,000 today? There's 700 of you. <clears throat> I've been following you since Batch of Pad Economics. That's 2013. Thanks to Press Panda. Did I catch up with everything? I think we're caught up. Make sure I don't miss any super chats. I feel awfully bad if I miss super chats. Patrick White, two bucks. News, guys. Any suggestion to get out of jury duty? I don't know. You got me. Uh, a bunch of girls in the chat room that Atham let in. <laughs> let all these girls in here, Atham. Cabra Goon Cabulous, five bucks. Future homo repairman. Home repairman. I thought it was like homo sapien, like a homo repairman. Future, home repairman, the new 10%. You have tools? <laughs> you have tools for that? Drops to her knees. Hey, a good set of tools is a good thing to own. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> oh, by the way, guys, just so you know, there's going to be cheating on both ends on the new contract. Girls are still going to use their feminine wiles. Oops, I broke down. Do you know how to fix the cars? And you'll be like, oh, yeah, I do. And then you will just give her two hours of your labor and a busted knuckle or two, and you won't get any play. Be like, no, nah, yeah, I could fix that. Well, what are you going to do for me? Well, there's some I like. Yeah. See, but you couldn't do that because that offends the old traditional sense now. See? So I guess you just, yeah, I can fix that. Like sometimes bums like, hey, you got any spare change? I, I'll say like, yeah, and I keep walking. <laughs> I do have spare change. I could give it to him. Can you fix my car? Yes, I can fix your car. And you just keep on walking. Or I gave the other option. Girls, you could not need a man and learn to be an auto mechanic yourself. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Me, Mike, five bucks. <clears throat> VVVV3 is on the horizon. Oh, World War III is on horizon. Poland going to need some reinforcements. This 50 50 partnership about to get really interesting. Boss Gale, strong, independent. I really don't pay that much attention to the Ukraine thing or Poland. I, I'm just here, man. I, I just, I just, I'm doing what I want right now. I went for a hike today. I'm going to play my Oculus Quest golf. I'm getting good night's rest. I'm going to do a video on good night's rest. What the hell is the woman doing now? I got a tuning fork or something. No. Can you guys hear that? <clears throat> uh, Hayes Mangle, two bucks. Why not just marry men? Well, what? Do, okay. Why would you get married, period? Forget who you marry. Why would you marry men? Why One, you got to be physically attractive if you want the romantic and sexual aspect of it, which is fine if you're a gay guy. Cool, knock yourself out. But even if you were gay, why would you marry? There's no reason to bring the state into it. Like, why would you subject yourself to these laws? <clears throat> Absolutely not. No one should be getting married. No one. Not in the United States. We should have agreements, contracts, we will date a period of three years. There will be no expectation. Three years is up. See you. Bye. <laughs> I don't like you. I don't wish to renew our contract. <clears throat> Rationale, irrationality, two books. We should harvest land cows for fuel and CO2. <clears throat> I guess, like methane from the cows, they um, it's kind of inefficient. If we open up the Bakken oil field, you get a ton of natural gas that way, and capturable. Irration rational, irrationally, two books. You and Coach Greg need to do a collab. I I'm I know Coach Greg. Uh, we are colleagues. He's a good guy. He's promoted me many times on his show. He's got his book, uh, Free Agent Lifestyle. Obviously, some of the same philosophies echoed here. Man, look at this going. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. <clears throat> Rusty Fuel, five bucks. How much were your solar panels and how many appliances can you run off of them if you lose power from the grid? Um, They were $28,000. I get a 
30% rebate from you guys, the taxpayers. And they were too much. Not just they're too pricey uh, for my relatively small house. They gave me more than I needed. <clears throat> um, I can pretty much run anything I want off of it, except the water heater will, if it's peak sun, it'll generate enough solar energy to heat up the water heater. Also, regular sun, it's enough to heat up the hot tub. But if you were to run the hot tub and the water heater and the dryer, yeah, I'm. it doesn't generate enough. Um, and that's where, you know, I tell the, the GF, like, if you're going to do laundry, wait for the water heater to done heating. If you're going to do that, wait for the hot tub to stop heating. You have a hot tub? Yeah, I do. I earned it right there, right there. I got to do some with my money. Sure the hell ain't buying a ring for the girl. She enjoys a hot tub more than the ring anyway. Why, why would you get a girl? Don't get a girl a ring. Get her a hot tub. <clears throat> um, So I could I could pretty much run them all. Uh, the issue becomes at night because they didn't get the battery pack, but that's where my Jackery 1000 comes in, uh, where that will keep lights on and all that. And I'm, I'm not I, – I can go without playing video games. I just need to listen to my podcast, and I'm happy. Just give me a little Stefan Moly. Give me a little Rolo Tomasi, a little TFM, a little uh, Tip in the Odds Vegas podcast. If you guys want a good podcast, listen to Rusty Fuel, two bucks. I harbor hate for harbor a freight. A couple of your tools break on you. Ethan Burton, two bucks. How do I negotiate, negate red pill rage other than the menu? Well, you just, it's a process. Um, I guess you could take anger management. I go to that, although less frequently now because life is good. Um, you... you the first, what I would say, the first thing, <clears throat> master stoicism. How do you master stoicism? Read the Way of Monkey book by Turd Flingy Monkey. Okay, just just do it. Just go get that book. <laughs> but you have to realize what is real, and to be thankful you discovered what is real. Yes, you were lied to your entire life. You no doubt wasted a lot of your youth and resources and time. Some people never discover the real world. And waste their entire lives. You should be thankful that you were woken up and now you know. You're like, oh, wait. And now all your future decisions can be based in reality and therefore have production and, and progress in the real world. Um, But you should be angry. You should have rage. You were lied to about one of the most important, if not the most important thing in your life, and that was women. By the women themselves and the people probably closest to you, your parents, your teachers. <clears throat> the adults, the media, well, they're not close to you. Yes, you should be very angry. You know, I was lied to about the prospects of, of college, you know, like, well, do whatever you want. Well, I really like economics and finance. No. So there should be an anger and a rage period. But then here's the question. Do you want to feel like that for the rest of your life? I'm not saying forgive these people. I'm not saying forget. I'm not saying don't think, well... If society collapses, I know who I'm going after. I'm not even saying, but you got a life, right? Do you want to be pissed off about crap that happened to you between zero and 20? You know, what, what would it be like? I'm assuming you're not married. What would have happened if you were 50 years old and after 20 years of marriage, your wife divorces you with a bunch of kids? Think about Terrence Pop, what he went through, Rich Cooper. Like, oh, my God, there's way worse. You discovered it young, I'm presuming, without any major problems. <clears throat> so there's kind of a, I don't know, a grieving process. But and, and now you know who your enemies are, or at least who's lying to you maliciously or not. And now going forward, live a happy and enjoyable life. Be, be thankful you figured this out and you're no longer confused. I mean, dude, it took me until 47 to really get to the point where I'm like, okay, I completely recovered and got back to where I should have been to catch up with where I would have thought my former. I'm still, I still lost two decades. Easy, two decades. Two decades gone. More like three. So I'm I'm eternally thankful I, I figured it out. I want to get badges with the big A, not for Aaron or asshole, but analog. The analog wars. Give it to me, Rolo, Rich, any guy over 40. Uh, yeah, you were part of the analog wars. Here you go. 
Uh, Philip Blair, five bucks. Dr. Phil has been a podcast about some book called San Francisco, why progressives ruin cities by Michael Schellenberg. Are, are you familiar with this book? No, uh, I don't really read books that much. I, uh, I take in podcasts. I, I don't like reading. I'm sure it's a good book. Um, but I, you don't, I, do I need a book to tell me the communist policies fail? When adult Democrats are crapping in your street, I think we could safely say that that I know that Democrat policies fail. Or if we want to look at the American Indian community or the black community, like, uh, did they follow what the Democrats said to do? They did. Oh, well, there's your results. <clears throat> I guess the tragedy is being an economist and being well researched on a ton of data. Nothing really surprises me, so I don't need a book for it. Um, I don't know, but Phil, if you've read it, like, oh my God, this is an amazing book. Like this is like, like Robert Massey's Peter the Great, which everyone should read. Not even if you're interested in Peter the Great, the guy was just the best writer I've ever read. I'm like, wow, this is an art. Cool. But otherwise, yeah, who knew free stuff and printing money doesn't work. Oh, wait, the Yugoslavians, the Soviets, the Venezuelans, the Mexicans, the Brazilians, the Argentinians, the Romans. Uh, Bob, two bucks. How long does it take you take how long it takes you to buy your land? Well, I paid cash. Because I own my house outright back in Minnesota and I sold it. And I had a ton of cash and I just paid cash for it. Um. I mean, but it shouldn't take you that long. You go get pre-qualified for a loan and the bank will back you up. Oh, yeah, you're qualified for this much. and You just go buy it. But instead of you cutting a check, the bank cuts the previous landowner a check. Ab oh, darn it. Abdul, where'd you go? I'll do a Wahib. Five bucks. I propose 16 men and 16 women, only two states. Oh, 16 men and 16 women, only states. Two states are for a mix-up. We're still short. 32, <clears throat> 34. We're short 16 states. What would the other 16 be? Co-ed? I mean, it it's going to get to that point where, ladies, I'll tell you this. If you don't knock it off with this victimhood mentality where a guy, you know, asking you on a date or spreading his legs on, on the subway so his nuts aren't crushed. If like that is getting to the offensive level that you can fire people or call the cops all right, then we are going to have to like literally have, okay, there are female companies and male companies. There's girl schools and male schools. <clears throat> and then there'll be female towns and men or sections of towns. And that's okay. We'll take the mountains. We'll take water sources just with our pistols and rifles and chilling out on our internet. Mm -hmm. Anna Kita smiles five bucks. Women go for the most popular career of the day. Well, that's to go for the most popular thing of everything. Used to be doctors, lawyers. Now it's engineers and YouTubers. Then I'll be electrician and plumbers. Well, that'd be fine. Then, then fi well, uh, doctors was valuable. Engineers are valuable, but lawyers and YouTubers are not valuable. I, I am all for women becoming the engineers and the accountants and the doctors and the plumbers. I want them to pay the taxes they keep voting in. I want them to produce things. I want them to be rich. Oh, my God, how much money? Did I? And then I want them to have the Democrat Party take half their money away. They'll be like, but, but, but. I'm like, did you vote for the big D? There's the big D in ladies' life. There's that big D. But the D that's even bigger than that one is the Democrat Party. Man, they love that big D. If you say, look, Big D, Democrat Party, or Big D, they're going to go with the Democrat Party because, you know, I mean, give me that. Am I right? Uh, all right. That was uncalled for. That was uncalled for. <clears throat> Cabragoon Cabulous, five bucks. Buddy, wash clothes, cold water. The detergent will work fine. Problem solved. Medium, medium, medium. How much detergent? Medium. Works on all my clothes. Live to talk about it. Now guess who does the laundry because she complained I was doing it once. I say, oh, am I doing it wrong? All yours for the rest of our lives. La, 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 la. 
What are you doing? Playing video games? How's laundry? <coughs> Abdul Wahib, two bucks. Sorry, can't be messed up. Math, 24 plus 24. Yeah, there we go. I know, I thought you had another idea for the other 16. Like, eh, they'd be co-ed. Uh, Generation Apollo, 10 bucks. Waiting for the day the parasites learn they can't legislate food, energy, healthcare into existence without men's participation, and it really sinks in. The salt fest will be glorious. They will riot. They'll just do what Minneapolis does. They'll riot and burn their own places down, which isn't going to help in winter. They're not that smart. They don't know where the food comes. They really don't. They think it comes from the 7-Eleven. They think it comes from the store. We hate white males. Gee, I wonder who grows all the food in America. All. Oh, my God. Am I caught up? I think I'm caught up. We're caught up, boys and girls. All right. So, <clears throat> link below, I think, are two books that will help you men. And I'm sorry, ladies, I only write books for men. I, okay, I take that back. I try to write a book for women. It was called The Menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. I try to advertise to female groups, specifically uh, female dating strategy, Jezebel. And I've heard nothing back. I did hear back for female dating strategy. And all she did was insult me. Well, why would I read your book? I said, well, because it was a number one bestseller in feminist theory on Amazon. Well, why did I? And I said, like, look, we've wasted enough time. If you just read the book, you'd know whether you'd like it or not. Well, it can't be that good of a book. If I, OK, all right, fine. <clears throat> all right, fine. So this is why I don't write books generally for women. But that doesn't mean the advice in the books I write don't help women, because whether you girls realize it or not, you still have to adhere to by the laws of economics and physics. So link below is the menu life without the opposite sex. That's the only olive branch I'm giving to women. I'm not giving you any more olive branches. Also, there is the uh, the book of numbers. <clears throat> I know it takes a lot for you guys to realize women don't like you that much, but please get that book. And the numbers show you how little interest women have in the average guy, admittedly the average guy. Then I go and, okay, reverse engineering all this formulae. What, what can you do to increase your chances with the girl side? But I think you guys got to give up this hope <clears throat> because this hope destroys you. You're hoping for something that isn't going to happen. I mean, look at all what all the all the good Obama's hope gave the people ahead, though. But ha ha! Oh, oh, oh. still poor, sir. Oh, oh. All right. Uh, you got to give up that hope so you don't have red pill rage or you get over your red pill rage. And you get on with a life that is possible and realistic. And so the, the only way I knew how to do that is to show you guys the numbers. The numbers were, were helped out with Fred, an actuary who unfortunately took his life last year. We're sad we miss, we miss Fred. We miss Fred. God, we miss him. Um, and so instead of you ending yourself because you can't find the girls, uh, will you please, one, realize your chances are pretty darn low unless you become an exceptionally uh, accomplished man. And if not, then you go pick up the menu. Otherwise, if you have problems spending, like you still think you got to get a car, all right, uh, right now, Open for Enrollment is my minimalism course through teachable.com. You could search Achieving Minimalism Teachable. You'll find it. Uh, or you could search for the name of the school, the Clary School of Economic Philosophy. And uh, I have another course on achieving financial excellence, but the one you'll need is the minimalism course. That is on average $500 plus or minus a little bit with the sales tax. Why is it so expensive? Because it's worth it if it stops you from spending money. Um, <clears throat> What else? And that's about it. There's other stuff. Bachelor Pad Economics might help you guys. Oh, well, smart people in the room. Curse of the high IQ. There's a segment for women in there too. I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't write for women anymore. I, I can't. Hey, here's the real world. Sexist? All right, never mind. Don't major in engineering. Just uh, go major in tiddlywinks. I don't care. Yeah, I don't know why you can't find a guy. You're 350 pounds. No clue. No clue. Yeah, it's the patriarchy. <laughs> Just go here. Whatever you, whatever you want to hear, here it is. Now give me money like Oprah and the Democrat Party. <clears throat> um, Zaranx, five bucks. As hokey as it sounds, forgiveness is really for the forgiver. It doesn't benefit you to let anger and resentment lead 
you where you'd rather not go. I I understand, and you're right in a certain regard, but if I did not have my anger and rage, I would have never gotten here. That was 100% the fuel that got me here. And that's why I have to like back off on the anger and rage because now that I've like, you know, kind of made it and things have settled down, I got stability and, and I've had my vengeance. Like the number of people I've saved from going through hell. And like the number of lies I've I've just like all the programming indoctrination when all these kids from teachers and guidance counselors, professors like boom, take that away. It's all gone now. All that work you did to get that. Yeah. One book took it all out of them. <clears throat> but I would I would never let go of the anger and rage, never forget and channel it into intense levels of production. And then then you do get your revenge because you're like, yeah, look at me. For some reason, I'm never invited to the high school reunions. I don't know why. Actually, I know why everyone hated themselves. I hated everybody so much in my school that there was never going to be reunions. <clears throat> me, Mike, two bucks, rhinestone with an I. Big D, woman. Am I right? Yep. Speaking of, I think I think the woman is doing laundry. Uh, SJ, Canadian, two bucks. How did Aaron meet the girlfriend in the before times? I was a ballroom dance instructor and she was a student. That's how I got laid most. That's how I found most of the girls. I, I take that back. A plurality of the girls. So I mostly got laid. I was uh, I was good. I was charming. I was charismatic. I was funny. And I was a damn good dancer. Still am. Still am a good dancer. And this one made really good food and has a real job. This one showed up on time. This one didn't hit me or cry or whine or do drugs or go back with the next boyfriend. This one was just, look, guys, find a nice girl with a real job, no debt. And about a point or two less attractive than you. That's there you go. That that's all you need to do. That's it, guys. That's all you have to do. Let me know when you find that girl with no debt and a good job. That's ha 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 ha. Look at you people. Ha 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 ha. Why? Come here. Come here. Watch them. They're gonna they're gonna go try and find a girl with a good job and no debt. <laughs> ha. All right, no more super chats because I got to go to a party. I think that's it. Is that it? That's it. <clears throat> All right, we've had some girls in the chat room. Adam has not done his job. All right, you girls better be on your good behavior. I don't know how you got in here, but you did. We like our girls. Don't tell anyone we like them. Good thing Atham wasn't around. Let him. All right, we like you. All right, see you kids later, toodles.